So first thing we're going to do on this machine is uh, try and run it. Um, obviously it's not starting under its own power from the carburetor. So what we can do is we can uh, attempt to start it via the air cleaner here. Uh, what we'll do is we'll spray some either starter fluid, gasoline, um, or a carburetor cleaner. Those are all flammable and okay for, for test firing an engine. If the motor fires under carburetor cleaner or starter fluid, um, but will not run under its own power, uh, you probably have a fuel system issue. Engine's not getting gas. So what we're going to do first is we're going to check the fuel sample within the carburetor and some of the gas tank. Uh, most debris within a fuel system is heavier than the gas, so it'll sink to the lowest point, that being the bottom of the carburetor and uh, the bottom of the gas tank. So getting those samples will get us a good uh, idea of exactly what contaminants are in there. So to get a little fuel sample here, what I'll do is I'll put my oil catch or my gasoline catch underneath the carburetor. And then uh, this is a Tecumseh engine. Um, it has a half inch bowl nut. A Briggs also has a half inch and Hondas have about 10 millimeter. So find a, a socket or a open and wrench that fits. We'll go ahead and crack this loose. There you go, the gas is starting to come out. Make sure you catch those first drops so you get a good quality sample. So we're just going to let a little bit of gas drain in there. Once you got a good sample, you can either use a set of fuel line clamps or uh, if you don't have that, a set of vice grips. Um, just uh, grab onto this fuel line lightly and uh, that'll pinch off the fuel. Or if you don't have one of these, what you can actually do is uh, tip the mower up so the carburetor is up in the air and it's sitting on its side. That'll uh, resist the fuel flow from the ga gas tank to the carburetor. I'm also going to pop the bowl off here. Put that sample in there as well. Our bowl is pretty clean, which is good. There's no corrosion and uh, a good sign as far as uh, rebuildability. So here's our fuel sample. It doesn't look too bad. Um, you can see a lot of uh, dirt and debris in the bottom, which uh, isn't the greatest. It may have clogged up your main jet. And then there's a little ball of water right here. But overall, it doesn't look too bad. And it doesn't smell all too bad either. Um, one of your bigger issues you're going to have is this bull nut. It's actually uh, the main jet for the carburetor. This will. Uh, this meter is your fuel for going into the, the engine. If this is clogged in any way, uh, it's not going to allow fuel in, not going to allow it to start. And uh, that's a big common issue. So. so now that we got our bowl off, we're just going to inspect our float here. Um, this looks pretty good. See there's a little bit of debris on there. We'll clean that off. Probably as well from taking it apart. Now the next thing we're going to do is uh, drain the fuel from the system. We can either drain it straight through the carburetor, but it's going to take a while. So my option is to pull this fuel line off and collect it with a can. So I'm going to collect my fuel sample here. Let's move that over there. Get in the room. Do is I'm going to take this little band clamp, move it down. What we'll do is we'll pull this fuel line off the bottom of the tank and drain our fuel that way. Okay, now that my fuel tank is completely dry, um, we'll go ahead and reassemble everything. When you do do this and your carburetor looks, uh, you know, okay like this guy, um, what you want to do is uh, spray a little carb cleaner up in there. Also in your intake. That'll help kind of just knock some of the debris off. This one's not very dirty, so it doesn't need to be removed. Same goes for your carburetor bowl. This is what holds your fuel, so all the deposits are going to sit in there. So you really want to get that clean. And the most important thing is your main jet or bowl nut. What we'll do is we'll spray some uh, brake cleaner in there. Then what we'll do is I'll take these uh, acetylene torch tip cleaners, if you have a paper clip, maybe some uh, stranded wire, anything with a 
varying sizes. You'll just want to poke in that uh, that main jet there. Help kind of clean it out. You know, there's a, a hole right down the center. There's a uh, orifice in the side, and another one right here in the threads. That one is uh, pretty small, so it's kind of hard to get. But do your best to uh, clean that out because this is what meters the fuel for your whole machine. If this is clogged, your machine's not going to run. So this is uh, a lot of the issues we see with fuel systems. Now once everything's clean, our gasket is still pretty pliable, both here and uh, your bowl gasket, which uh, goes around the body of the carburetor, seals your bowl up there, and your bowl mount gasket. Uh, if it's leaking from those two, you're going to have to buy some new ones. They're pretty cheap, so uh, when in doubt, you can always get a new one, but it's not crucial for a simple repair like this one. Just gonna start that bowl nut by hand. I'll finish off with a wrench. Now you don't have to hammer this down. Um, you really should only be uh, putting a, uh, a couple foot pounds or so. Um, I'm just gonna basically just push it with my thumb here. Just get it nice and snug. All I have to do is put a little pressure on that gasket and it'll seal. No need to put the hammer down on it. So now we're going to put some gas in it and uh, give her a shot, see if she can't start up. Um, if you want to put some fuel system cleaner in here as well, that uh, won't hurt to tile it to you, but uh, fuel system cleaner on its own will not fix most of your issues. Um, you really want to clean it out manually and then put some cleaner in there to kind of flush out the remnants and the smaller debris. Any large debris or water, it's not going to be fixed by fuel system cleaner. So I got fresh fuel in there and uh, we want to give it a second since the uh, whole fuel system is dry. Got to let the, uh, the gas flow down into the carburetor bowl. So about 10 seconds. Once again, I'm going to prime it two, three, four, five times and uh, we'll see if you're wrong. So obviously it started there. What you want to hear is a good, smooth running condition. It's uh, not surging. The RPMs aren't going up and down. And it's also not, uh, not choking, not, not coughing. Um, it's good, healthy noise. And uh, it seems like it's good to go for the season. While you're working on your mower, a couple things you want to check. Everyone says uh, check your air filter and spark plug. Um, to tell you the truth, they're not a, a huge issue. Unless you see anything apparently wrong with them, it's not going to cause it to not start. Uh, here's our air filter. This is on a uh, Tecumseh. It's just a 30 degree twist lock. Pull it out with the filter. This filter is not too bad. I'd probably change it because it has uh, a lot of dirt and oil in it. But this is not going to cause it to not run. Uh, only if it's packed and completely suffocated would it ever cause it to not run. So I'll put a new one in there. As far as your spark plug goes, just checking out your spark plug. Um, you want to use a 13 16 that's your common lawnmower spark plug size and uh, most engines some use three quarters that's usually a uh, chainsaw and two cycle engine size and there's a smaller plug which is five eighths which is on a lot of your import like honda and uh, kawasaki larger motors but for the briggs and the tecumseh engines on most of your mowers these days just a uh, 13 16 So if you look at this plug, it's uh, a little dark, which uh, signifies uh, rich running and uh, fuel contamination. It's going to cause it to uh, soot up like this. Once again, you just saw this running, so it's not going to cause it to not run. It's, uh, but it is an easy fix. These bark plugs only cost about four or five bucks. You can get them just about anywhere. Um, this is a B4LM. That's an NGK number. If you have a Champion spark plug, it'll be a 19. J, RJ 19LM um, and uh, it's pretty common. You can sand those or clean them if you'd like. I'm just going to replace it. Here's a new plug compared to our old plug. As you can see it's perfectly clean. Um, the gap on these usually come pre-gapped at about 20 thousandths. Um, that's a good gap, 20 to 25 thousandths on a uh, lawnmower. Like I said, they usually come pre-gapped but uh, if you drop it you're going to have to re-gap it. Um, 
these have a crush washer right here. So when you put these guys in, you want to screw them in by hand until they bottom out and they seat. And then what you want to do is do either, either a half to about two thirds of a turn after, and that is the proper torque spec of these. You don't want to hammer these down because these aluminum heads will strip quite easily and uh, there's no need for it. You just want a good snug fit. So it's seated right now on my uh, body and we're just going to do a, a half turn, make it to about two thirds of a turn. That's all we need. It started to get a little difficult and that's when I ended. These spark plug boots, they can be a little stiff when you take them off sometimes. So give them a nice twist when you're removing them. And uh, if you want to, you can spray a little mineral oil on there to lubricate them when you put them back on. Same goes, twist it when you put it back on. All right. So here's our old air filter and our new air filter. I was gonna put our new air filter on. This is the standard Tecumseh uh, air filter, part number. 36905. Um, if you have a Briggs and Stratton or a Honda, chances are it's a large square air filter, um, both paper. Um, that part number is 491588S, and that works for Briggs and Stratton, Kohler, Hondas. It's a pretty common air filter. This is the, uh, the next common one. Just put it on, you just twist lock like this. Um, Good to go. This one was a little swollen, so it was a little difficult to get on. So another thing you want to do is check your oil. Here's your dipstick here. Pull it out. Wipe off the oil that's on there so you get a good clean reading. These guys, you screw them down. Uh, Briggs and Stratton, you just put them in and twist it if you'd like. And uh, Honda's, actually, you just seat on the top. You don't screw it in. Um, there should be an signifier on the side of your engine if it... Uh, requires you not to screw these down to get a good measurement. So you can see right here, pretty clean oil and it's at the full mark. So that's good to go. We don't need to change that. If it's black at all, you want to change it. If it's gray, that means you're having any uh, engine wear going on. And obviously uh, you want it to the top of your hash marks here, full and uh, add it if it's below there. Most of your engines these days will take about 20 ounces of oil. So when you drain them, there's still going to be some oil left over. So all you need is about 18 ounces to uh, do an oil change.